during the break. Moving on to the next presentation, and I'm changing my hat, so now I'm going to make the next presentation, if you don't mind. My presentation will be about the photomont radar capacities for radar image processing. Very rarely at our conference we speak about this product and about radar remote sensing because the market in this field is more narrow and is highly specific how radar remote sensing is done. At the same time, radar imagery, imagery sensing has a lot of advantages and is can do things that uh, optical data are incapable of doing. And the radar satellite constellations are developing and dynamically growing. And I believe that in future we shall see also Russian radar satellites and radar data will play big bigger role and used more broadly for practical tasks. Perhaps such applications mentioned on this slide are also possible, like creation of digital elevation models, ground displacement monitoring with a sub-centimeter precision infrastructure monitoring, agriculture, oil slick detection, ships detection, ice fields monitoring, cartography, monitoring of emergency situations, and many others. In the beginning, I'd like to say a few words about the specificity and the advantages and disadvantages of the radar imagery, which predetermine to a large extent their application for different solutions. Two most obvious advantages of radar imagery is their total independence from the lighting conditions. Uh, radio, radar registers reflections that it uh, emits and it can uh, acquire images both daytime and nighttime and totally independence from weather conditions. It can shoot through any kind of cloudiness, which is explained by the fact that radars work in the frequency bands shown on the right side of this slide. And most popular is will be XC, XNL, SNL. Within this bands, the atmosphere is totally transparent, and the reflection almost doesn't uh, interact with the atmosphere. The central particularity, principal particularity of radar imagery, of course, is that radar imagery works with a coherent emission. They register not only the amplitude and intensity, but also the phase, which opens up great opportunities for different applications. A radar emissions can also be polarized. Usually it's a linear polarization and they can register the reflected uh, signal in different polarization and this information about the dispersion coefficients with different falling and dispersed wave bears a lot of information about the materials and the quality of the land surface. Coherence, unfortunately, aside from the advantages, has disadvantages. The main disadvantage is the speckle noise, which can be manifested on the uh, homogeneous texture surface, which has a typical form of a mixture of salt and pepper. Speckle noise can be addressed by different methods of uh, noise reduction, but this way you, of course, visually enhance the image, but uh, you can have a negative impact on some other characteristics. As a matter of principle, I can must say that radar satellites, all radar satellites are uh, side view radars. They do not shoot or do not acquire an idea. They all usually do it 20, 40 degrees from that year, which is explained by the specificities of forming the radar images. And uh, another interesting fact that the resolution of a radar in uh, angle views 
in perpendicular to the flights is growing uh, from the angle from Nadir vis-à-vis uh, -vis what we usually have with the optical image acquisition. The photomont radar functionality is shown on this slide and it largely repeats some of the applications that had been listed previously and uh, most of these capacities and functionalities will be described in my presentation. Whenever I can, I can speak in greater detail about the specificities of radar images and radar image processing. A typical scheme of acquiring and processing radar images almost fully coincides with the optical image acquisition. I just wanted to underline the fact that initially radar registers the so-called complex hologram which has nothing to do with a picture or with, with an image in the main sense of this word and in order to translate that radio hologram into a picture or an image the image that we'll have to work with one needs to do quite a sophisticated procedure called synthesis the, as a result of the synthesis we get level one which is already an image not geo-referenced to system of coordinates and starting from level one photomont radar starts working and many other software suites which work with radar images photomont radar structure includes input and expert that uh, unifies all data into a single format that other utilities can use. The software uses radar imagery in different supportable formats. It also creates uh, GCPs, geodetic data, DEMs, uh, ellipsoids data, auxiliary vector data. Virtually all supported sensors are presented in the suite. That package uh, implements the idea of a single radar and all the data processing is done in a similar fashion regardless of the origin of the locator. There are separate uh, utilities used to import data because there can be some specificities with the, the data presentation. Then we have a set of visualization tools 2D viewer naturally of raster and vector images. 3D viewer is mostly used to show the terrain models. In order to convert the data into more usual way we're using geocoding processor. That recalculates level one to a georeferenced raster. Here on the left you can see a georeferenced image and on the right a geocoded image. This is an amplitude image. When we know what kind of relief we have, a geocoding processor enables uh, masks of layover and shadow masks. It is also possible to carry out interferometric computations. If we have two 
interferometric images for one and the same area of interest acquired from two locally parallel orbits with a distance not greater than a, a couple hundred meters, then by analyzing phases of pixels for the same point of the surface, we can have a difference of distances. And that difference is driven by the altitude of the point above the ellipsoid. So later you can extract that data and generate DSM. It is a two-pass or three-pass or four-pass persistent scatterous small baseline methods all are in there although the two latter ones are still in beta testing. Uh, we also combine phase image with uh, uh, pixel accuracy we do interferograms and interferograms cover uh, 0 to 2 P's. We also do resampling of the phase. So in a range from 0 to 2 P you can uh, cover the entire field of the image and then that phase is easily recalculated into height. First we receive uh, relative heights because the baseline is always uh, relative and then from there we can proceed to absolute values. Here we can see how phases change from 0 to 2p on the left and on the right we have digital elevation model. Those who are used to horizontal imagery fringes remind you a lot of those contours and here it becomes even uh, more evident we're dealing with an unwrapped phase on the right composition of wrapped and unwrapped phases. This is a radar sat uh, pair of images for the valley of death. A couple of images and the resulting elevations. Another example with CompSat images of Mongolia and the restored elevation in 2D and 3D. If we have more than two interferometric images we can receive uh, differentiated interferograms that will include information about uh, elevation changes that took place between imaging this is an example of differential interferometry using series CX images for Klutovskaya Sopka in Russia. This is a two pass differential interferometry. And then we have a four pass interferometry. This is the field of displacement with uh, light and dark lines indicating major shifts or insignificant shifts. Yeah. 
using radar images we can obtain an elevation by processing amplitude images and the processing algorithm is very similar to stereo pass processing first there is a, a co registration creating a field of parallaxes the formulas for calculating altitude parallaxes is completely different oh, this is radar sat1 image and uh, as I told you radar's radiation is typically polarized it can beam in different polarizations both horizontally and vertically and the registration takes place in two perpendicular polarizations and uh, these are uh, a different uh, multipolarization data sets that uh, carry a lot of useful information about specifications of the uh, properties and can be used for classification of earth surface this is photo mode radar we transition from four complex approach to some sort of a descriptor that does uh, classification of uh, points in the terrain. This is an example of polarimetric a full polarimetric matrix from left to right. As we can see the, the images are similar but they are still distinguishably different. These are qualifi uh, classifications that resulted from these images. Again, this is uh, Terrasar X for Moscow. Setting or fine tuning classification is the most challenging thing. Switching from polymetric matrix to some sort of descriptor is not a trivial task and requires a lot of investigation. And a few words about maritime applications. Radar is good uh, for detecting oil slicks, ship detection. It's just that ships utilize two to three angles, which, when positioned, versus uh, the radar in a certain way uh, creates uh, bright points which makes it uh, easy to detect those ships if we see the wake of the ship then we can determine the direction the ship is going and the velocity of that ship Oil slicks are found based on the fact that the oil slicks or oil films created by oil products on the surface suppress ripple, becoming a mirror surface, uh, basically, uh, for the signals coming from the radar, which results in specific dark patches which are easy to find and easy to describe in vector or raster form. We use mathematical models to characterize of the surface 
I mean, C waves. There are different parameters, height of waves, period of waves. So we can determine the velocity of the natural winds. And another nice feature is coherent change detection. If we have several interferometric images, then by analyzing phase coherence, we can find differences because the phase is sensitive to any changes on the surface. So we are able of finding changes that are not possible to find on optical images. Here's an example of CompSat 5 side-by-side -side image comparison in Baikal area. We developed the coherent map on the left. This is a coherent image. And on the right, uh, you can see dark spots that have been uh, zoomed in on a fragment below it, so light colors indicate high coherence, dark colors indicate low coherence, which means some changes have occurred in the terrain. In fact, some logging activities have taken place. That's all that I managed to tell you on this interesting subject. I am slightly over time. Four minutes over time. Your questions, please. <laughs> Alexander, what level of accuracy did you manage to achieve for interferometric imagery? and the traditional stereo pairs. I'm, I'm interested in the altitude. Uh, so you're interested in digital elevation models, not change detection. It's a tough question. It depends greatly on the surface. If it's a desert, if it's a rocky surface where nothing changes, where coherence stays for long, the accuracy is pretty high. There is an SRTM digital elevation model that is based on interferometric processing of radar images. Locally, you can even attain sub-meter accuracy, but it highly depends on a number of factors. Ideally, those accuracies can be very high. But if we're targeting in uh, a complex area of interest with vegetation and so on, it's much more difficult. SRTM, uh, to be present on the market in a more or less decent way, had to process f for years where they cleaned out any artifacts and so on. Alek asked my question. All I can say is that it would be great if Rakus could come up with classification of uh, accuracy characteristics based on a survey mode. And I think it has a lot of future. Thank you. Alexander, another small question. Valeri already said that uh, a domestic satellite condor is scheduled to be launched. Will you be ready with photomod radar to cover it? We are ready already. And another question concerning the application of, of this for logging. Do you think it would be easier to use radar data or panchromatic images, multispectral images, which are more reliable to detect uh, logging areas? I think uh, radar images 
uh, are much more prom promising because it's uh, regardless of the weather you will have your radar images if you have to acquire data once a month you will have that data with optics you know you never know what might happen there are limitations questions again uh, we are slightly behind the schedule any questions will have to be postponed